Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of In-Depth Angling. I'm excited to record this as we are taking a look at the crappie in Stockton Lake, breaking down the patterns, locations, and structures, as well as baits to use to catch more and bigger crappie during the winter months. We are going to go over some tips and tricks as well as some crappie fishing spots on the lake in this video, so be sure to hang with us. You won't want to miss out. Before I go into covering everything in this video, if you are new to the channel, if you would be so kind as to consider subscribing as it makes me want to keep doing more of these videos and supports the channel. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you for supporting me make lake breakdowns and fishing videos like this one. Let's dive right into this thing. Stockton Lake has 298 miles of shoreline created by the dam at the north end of the lake and has two major river channels from the Little Sac and Sac River arms that join up in a v-shape on the north end of the lake shown here. There are both white and black crappie in Stockton Lake. In the early winter crappie are feeding aggressively as they prepare for the cold months ahead of them while the water temperature hangs in the 50s and upper 40s they are in their transition phase from fall to winter patterns and locations. Shad become a crappie's main food source throughout the fall and winter. So once the shad begin to move from the shallow banks to deeper stable water, the crappie follow them to their winter haunts. As water temperatures drop, the shad will abandon the shallows as they don't handle the cold well. Water temperature is the key factor in when that will happen, and the timing varies from year to year based on the weather Stockton Lake gets, but you'll start to see a big shift in locations the crappie go to once the water cools below the 50s in search of that stable water. With that being said, not all of the crappie will move at one time as the water temperature can vary several degrees in different areas of Stockton Lake. The southern section of the lake that I'm on here shown on the map has shallower, dirtier, more stained water. It cools down sooner than the northern, deeper, stable water and it has narrower channels. Uh, not as deep of coves, not as deep of a river channel in it. I'll zoom in here so you guys can see this real quick. But as deep as it really gets out here is about in the 35 foot range. Creek Coves, which is just a major one down here on the southern end of the lake, is around 28 foot or so. And this is an area that gets a lot of new runoff from these creek coves and as well from the river arms themselves. They tend to get a lot of new inflow of water. So as we get cooler water, cooler rains, snowfall, whatever comes in in the early part of the winter, that's all melting off or running off into these creek arms of the lake and into the river arm. That's cooling that water down a lot faster than it would be where the tributaries are the furthest away. And it's also got the deepest water, which is the section of lake down here on the north end. Now, it's a lot different structurally and depth wise down here than it is up there on those tributary arms up the river way. There's a lot more open water out through here. It's really deep. It's about 90 foot deep out here in the middle of the main channel. Once you get down here by the dam, it's got a lot cleaner water. It cools down and heats up a lot slower than the rest of it does on the rest of the southern sections of the lake over there. It has the worst wind because it's so open and there's a lot more bigger creek channel coves that have more substantial depth to them. So that one that I showed you down there was 28 foot, but if I just come over here, uh, over here by Orleans, I can zoom in on this, and the mouth of this cove is in the 70s and 50s. So that just tells you how big of a difference it is depending on whether you're up the river arms or down here towards the dam. It can vary quite a bit in depth, and it takes a lot longer for water temperature to change when there's that much of that depth that's here compared to up there on those upper arms. And this all matters this time of year because if you're trying to pattern these fish or figure out what they're doing, the upper arms of the lake are going to be cooled down first and those crop will be pushed out more into a winter feeding phase and winter locations before this area does. The area down here by the dam will be the last area to go into a winter mode. We'll be able to catch fish in the fall pattern, uh, the longest on Stockton down here. Once crappie do start to move out into their winter patterns, crappie move out to nearby creek channels and coves, steeper banks, points, drop-offs, deep brush piles, standing trees, and even the old river channel on the main lake throughout the winter. And a couple examples of some creek channels here is there's one main one that comes right through the heart of this. As you guys can see, it's kind of the more white area down through here. There's an old submerged bridge right here. Um, but there's also a couple somewhat smaller creek channels that come out of these pockets here, old creek bed. And those are going to be areas that those fish will move out to first. They'll kind of set up on some of these secondary points in here as well, especially if they have any kind of brush that are sitting on them. Uh, shad will be moving out and if they start to set up on some of those points and can get some wind on there expect the crappie to be on those points they're going to be continuing to move out throughout the uh, winter time they'll hang out over here on some of these more main lake style points and along these drop-offs near the old river channel especially as we get to those colder months 
those shad are going to be moving out to the deeper water. Although this cove here has deep enough water to hold fish year round in it as it's sitting in 50 to 60 foot of water out here in the middle of this. During the fall to winter or the winter to spring transition phases, crappie follow the same routes. During the fall they follow their food out deep and their metabolism gets slower as temperatures drop down into the 40s and even 30s. The bite can become tough for anglers to figure out. Crappie move further shallow instead of deep during the later part of the winter leading up to the spring and their pre-spawn phase in the same areas I just showed you. Once water temperatures begin to warm and return to the upper 40s and low 50s, creek channels are like highways for crappie in these transition phases, but they can also hold good numbers of crappie in the dead of winter, especially if there is sufficient depth to hold chad and have deep water structure crappie can suspend in and around. That deep water structure could be anything from a submerged road and an old bridge, or it could be flooded timber that we have over here near Indian Ridge. There's tons of flooded timber in this cove. There's a submerged bridge here in the back of this area here. Um, as these fish are going to be continuing to move out, they're going to come from the shallow area here and work their way out in the lawn, some of these different trees through here, and they're going to continue to push their way out here to where they have a nice deep basin of around 30 foot or more, especially as we head into deeper into the winter when the water temperature is starting to get down to that 30 degree mark. As we move into the heart of winter, old river channels play a bigger role in where crappie congregate. Brush piles or standing trees in these open water areas produce consistently, especially if there are no big creek channels with enough depth like much of the southern portions of Stockton Lake. This is an example of an area that the old river channel swings right up against the bluff end over here and it comes underneath the 245 bridge. It's a very popular angling spot for people during the winter time for crappie and they have some uh, sunken brush piles that are around these pilings. Crappie like to hang out here especially as it gets really cold. Um, look for those fish to be kind of sitting out here into some of these bigger creek coves as well until it gets to that point but since these creek coves are only in like the 30 foot range or so um, they'll kind of hang out here in the mouth of this sometimes but a lot of times once you start getting to where them only the deepest portion of these creek coves are in the 30s, they'll a lot of times pop off over into these deeper depths off of these cliffs and be down suspended around the bridge pilings or around brush. And speaking of brush, the Missouri Department of Conservation has created brush piles in large numbers across the lake and they have them marked with details such as the year they were made and coordinates to help anglers find them easier. I will have this map linked below in the video description so you guys can look into more of these great brush piles. But I'm going to go over a few of these fish attractors that stand out and separate themselves from others on the lake for holding more crappie this time of year. For this example right here, the one I've got highlighted was put down in 2015 and it has a very unique area that's over here. I'm gonna close this out real quick so I can show you guys. But there's a huge creek cove here uh, on the left side of your screen and it comes out and there's other brush piles that are in this creek cove as well. Uh, they were also put in there in 2015. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these brush piles. It's just as we get further and further into the winter, those fish are no longer going to be holding out in a lot of these areas as much as they would be out here towards the main channel. And we get out here towards the main channel and we have kind of an intersecting spot. So all these creek coves, whether you're from this cove here, this cove here, the back of this, back of this, the back of this. So you have all these different inlets over here where those shad and those crappie have been up feeding during the fall. And uh, a lot of these other brush piles and fish attractors in this cove that have been giving these fish structure throughout those different times of year. As the shad are leaving out of this cove here, they're going to come out of all sides here and they're going to kind of merge and have a crossroads right around this point. And just off of this point out here where there's nice deep water, there's some nice brush piles that are there. Those are going to be key areas I'm going to look for where they have crossroads between all these creek channels. They all flow out here towards the main river, uh, old channel that's out here on the main channel. All these creek channels in this cove here flow out to this spot, whether they're coming from the left side of your screen or the right here. They all have to move out if they're going to the old river channel and kind of pass right around through where these brush piles are. Uh, these ones over here as well. They're not bad, uh, just need to have enough water on them for them to have enough depth and for them to have that stable water where the shad and those crappie are going to be looking for this time of year as we start plummeting in temperature. This is what that same picture looks like on Navionics where you guys can see the depth change here. As you can see, there's a lot of deeper water out in here in the middle of both of these, but they kind of both merge right here off this point, and that's where that brush pile is at. As you come down here, the old creek channel swings right up against this bank here. The old river channel swings up against it here as well. So it's a lot of deep water and two channels merge right here 
off of this point. And what we have here are a couple of brush piles sitting off of that as well. Those are going to be key areas that I'm going to be looking for as well. I'd expect to be finding a lot of shad, a lot of crappie. Other species of game fish are going to be there as well just because that's where the food's hanging out at. These brush piles provide areas for algae to grow so shad can feed on the algae. Uh, crappie can use them as ambush points and kind of be able to get into cover whenever there is high sun out so they're more concealed or whenever they have a cold front and they feel like going deep and just kind of burying themselves in that thicker cover that's there for them. Crappie or structure nuts, any kind of woody cover is always good. You just got to find the right depth and wherever the bait fish are and you'll find the fish. Brush piles here or the ones that are sitting out off the ends of these channel intersections are going to be consistently holding fish throughout the winter. Whether that's in the late winter transition going into spring or the late fall going into winter, those are going to be the places I'm going to look for. As I come up here, there's also more fish attractors, more brush piles sunk. Uh, this one was in 2022, a current year here. It's out here in the middle of the channel. I'll pop over to Navionk, show you guys what the depth is of this real quick. I'll zoom in on this real quick though. So we're right there. So that brush pile I just showed you guys is somewhere over here on this flat, uh, close to this old drop off right here, which drop offs are again, great for crappie structure. It allows those fish to go from deeper water to shallower water. And those bait fish will move up and down those ledges as well. They'll oftentimes be kind of chasing after those, um, as you can imagine. With the barometric pressure, cold fronts, and weather patterns have a lot to do with whether those fish are going up or down on those and what mood the fish are in. The brush pile that's out over here, which I'll pop back over to this, is uh, new. So they're going to have a lot of years of use out of that one. That would be one that you guys should be going out there and taking a look at, see if it's holding crappie yet. Usually they take a little bit to get seasoned, get the algae growth going on them really good, and they get a little bit better after they have about two or three years in the water that I find. Some of these older brush piles that are put in here from 2012, um, that's over 10 years old now. Those brush piles are going to be very deteriorated, even though there might be still some structure that's there. They're not going to be as full of structure as what the new ones are. So when I'm doing this, and you guys can do this for yourself, but go onto this map and look around and click on some of these and just pay attention to what year they're put in. This one here is a 2010, so that one's probably gone. Um, this one's a 2016, so it's probably there. So it looks like the Department of Conservation has replenished that one. Keep an eye on for what year they were put in there. It's going to help you save some time and which one to go to because some of these ones that have been there for over 10 years, 12 years, are not going to be as fruitful for you anymore because even though they used to hold fish five or six years ago, that brush has started to decay on the bottom of the lake. Depth crappie hold at around structure varies from weather patterns, water temperature changes, and if there are any shad in the area. Expect crappie to hold tighter to cover in the bottom after cold fronts and barometric pressure changes. They tend to push fish deep and bites become light. Drop-offs are great to try to find those fish after cold fronts. A lot of times they'll push off these drop-offs whether they're on a main lake flat or they're off of these channels. Um, like if they're sitting over here on some of these brush piles near this cove over here, they will start to push off into the old river channel a lot of times after a cold front. And with the old river channel being so close as it is, this drop off here, that's going to be key here to look at where those fish are not going to have to move a whole lot of distance to be able to change a lot of depth quickly. Pools of shad near brush piles makes the crappie get actively feeding or at least more suspended around the brush piles and more up off of and away from the cover. Electronic fish finders can help you find bait fish and structure crappie use and play a key role to speeding the search up for crappie. Summer days with wind will bring crappie up shallower in the water column and oftentimes they will be much easier to catch once you find them. Jig vertically to reel up through the schools of suspended crappie with jigs or minnows that imitate shag colors if you are in clear water and use louder colors such as chartreuse or yellow, for example, if you're in more of a stained or a muddier colored water. Usually those kind of stained or muddier colored waters are also going to be up to river arms on the southern section of the lake because, like I said earlier, that's where your runoff comes in at. Dying or struggling shad become more abundant when water temperatures get into the 30s. Small jerk baits fished over the top of structure or suspended schools of crappie work well to imitate an easy meal. If you see dead shad floating on the lake, 
or washed up on shore once the shag kill starts in these colder temperatures, make sure to use a slow retrieve as crappie have a slower metabolism during this time as well and aren't as apt to chase shad or any kind of food for that matter, including your jig or your jerk bait. There's a 10 inch length limit on Stockton that allows crappie to reach larger sizes and have a bigger population of quality fish in the lake. The Missouri Department of Conservation Electrofishing Survey samples from 2022 found 62% of white crappie were over the 10 inch minimum length limit and 56% of the black crappie measured in over the 10 inches as well. This should make for some awesome days of fishing on the water this year and some future fish fries for us anglers. I hope this helps you learn something about Stockton Lake or the winter crappie fishing it has to offer and that this helps you pattern crappie on the lake so you can intercept crappies in the early and late winter as they move from and to deep water on their travel routes and everything in between. Thank you to everyone who stayed to the end of the video. I really appreciate all the new subscribers that have been making this channel grow like a weed. I can't thank you enough because without you, this channel doesn't exist. So thanks to you for supporting me make more content like this video for you. Till next time, tight lines, and remember to explore deeper. There's more out there.